Hello everyone. Uh, today's video, we're going to take a look a little bit more at Simple Rockets. Uh, I was taking a look at some of the comments from last week, and uh, some folks uh, were saying they were kind of enjoying some of this stuff. I really enjoy some of this stuff, so I thought I'd kind of keep going along with it. So uh, last week, uh, we basically made a solid rocket version of our first Mercury mission. So today, I thought it'd be kind of fun to try to uh, do the full orbit version. Uh, we're going to leave the solid rocket out of it this time. We're going to get a little conventional and kind of steal the general concept that they used for the original Mercury mission, which was basically a Jupiter ICBM which I think is a little dangerous, but hey, it's part of the fun, right? So first things first, uh, we want to design our little mercury capsule up here on tippy top here. So on one meter radius, it's kind of pretty good for us. I'm actually going to stick a little dummy inside of it so we can make things a little bit more authentic here. Uh, get in there. Let me know what it turns out. <laughs> I know he's just standing here and it looks like he's going to be riding on the side of this. That's not actually how that works, so don't worry about it too much. So as usual, I'm going to get ourselves kind of our standard little components to kind of make this possible. I'm going to take myself a little parachute on the tippy top. Underneath, we're going to get ourselves a heat shield. I'm probably going to do a millennia orbit today in order to simple things a little bit. Millennia is just a very, very eccentric orbit. It's not that it's a weird orbit. It's just, it's just very elliptical, as you'll see. And of course, we want to get our re-entry section. Uh, since we're going to be traveling high speed and we are intending on orbiting today, our re-entry components are going to have to be engineered to have us a little bit more basically delta V than we normally need. So I can't do the math quick enough, but it's going to be like 450, I think 500 meters a second total delta V to safely get us down. So let's go ahead and get ourselves everybody's favorite little interstage right here. It does not need to be that big because, again, it's not protecting anything other than a heat shield. Usually with interstages, I always like to kind of color them a slightly different color. I'm going to do default here. Uh, we'll just make it blue, make it kind of interesting there. Let's go ahead and get our little rocket booster, our re-entry motor here. So in the original Mercury missions, uh, they used this little tiny rocket pack. It was like the cutest thing ever. It was awesome. So um, obviously, we're not going to recreate that completely here. We're going to do kind of my cheap knockoff version like I always do. That looks pretty good to me. Let's go ahead and see what we got for Delta V. Again, we need, uh, oh my god, we don't need that much. We can almost get orbit with this thing. And look at our thrust to weight ratio. Oh my god. Okay, we're going to need something a little bit weaker than that for this purpose. So I'm just confirming real quickly that I didn't goof up too much here. And it looks like I've already goofed up a little bit. One of the things I always forget to do is to put in the uh, reaction control system. That's the RCS. So let's go ahead and get ourselves some good stuff for that. Uh, we'll go up here, get a little battery. Uh, most of my batteries are only about 0.2. That's Again, it's average for me. Go ahead and uh, set this as being battery. Again, I'm not, not going crazy here. I just want to make sure everything makes sense. There we go. So now we have ourselves our onboard battery. Let's go ahead and get our RCS tank as well in case we need to do anything like that. Usually about half a meter is more than enough for RCS. Again, that's going to be the system that allows us to orient the rocket in any which direction that I need to do. We're going to be there as hydrazine. And now we're going to go ahead and pop on our little bottom. Notice that it's absolutely murdered our delta V here. Now we're only at about 599 meters a second. Like I said, we only need about 500 to re-enter safely. And honestly, I think this is a little bit too much engine for us. So um, I'm kind of a fan of solids, as everybody knows. So let's go ahead and get ourselves a solid rocket. And I want to use uh, kind of the new stuff, the CTPB. And it does not need to be that big. As a matter of fact, that thing really doesn't need to be that big. It also doesn't need to be that powerful. I'm going to reduce my chamber pressure significantly. Notice my thrust to weight ratio is still a staggering five, almost five to one, which is, <laughs> I feel sorry for my little guy on board, but sorry, you'll have to deal. All right, let's optimize this thing so that it functions best inside of space, which gives me 280. That's pretty good. Let's go ahead and adjust my nozzle length. I can't look at the size of that thing. I don't need anything that big. So uh, we'll go ahead and uh, leave that back at its default. We can actually make it pretty tiny, but then it's going to have absolutely no push at all. So we need a little bit here. So let's say 100% is going to be okay. And then, of course, we're going to have the tinker panel, and uh, we're going to cheat just a tiny bit. Look away. Look away. You didn't see this. I didn't do this. Hey, look at that. Hey, it works. Cool. Okay, but we're still at 750 meters a second, which is way too much thrust for us. I'm going to take that off. I'm going to shrink my... What is this? Uh, actually, I believe this is... Uh, yeah, it's my solid. Let's reduce this even more. Let's knock that down to like 30, I think. Let's put that on there now. Yeah, five... Four, yeah, we want exactly one more. I'd rather have too much than too little, if you know what I mean. Okay, that'll work. Cool. Okay, so this is my little Mercury capsule. No, the guy's not going to ride on the side of it on the way up. So now we got to get this darn thing to orbit. So uh, let's see here. We'll go over here. We'll get myself, myself an interstage. Uh, like I say, I always like to mark interstages uh, with some other color so that I know that it's an interstage. So grab that, boop, and now we know that we have the interstage to get me the capsule, and we have the interstage. It's kind of the CEM, if you want to think about it. And we, now we have the interstage for the rocket. Now, the Jupiter rocket was a unique rocket for like a million different reasons. Uh, the first thing we got that makes it kind of unique is the fact that it's like a one and a half stage. 
So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to increase my diameter. I'm going to come up to uh, 1.5 here, which is going to give me a pretty big, thick rocket here. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, drop this down again. I'm all guesstimating. I don't know what my actual numbers are going to come out to be here. We're going to find out in a minute, I'm sure. So this is going to be my rocket, and this is going to be what I'm going to be putting into orbit here. Actually, if I think it's just a little on the weird side. So maybe I'm going to shrink it down a little bit. Not too much, though. There we go. I like that. Okay. So now we're going to go ahead and throw our little rocket on the bottom of this thing. Remember the early Jupiter missions, the rockets themselves were, again, this was based off of an ICBM. So they were not very user friendly as far as fuels goes. So um, we're going to go ahead and use, uh, let's see here. I'm probably going to use, what cycle here? Probably gas generator. We're going to use the oldest technique. And we're going to use something extremely dangerous called aerosene, which is <laughs> fuming nitric acid. It's uh, not a very pleasant, but it's what they used to use back in the day if they wanted to get into airborne. So the way that they did this with the Jupiter is you actually had a total of three rocket motors. You had two booster rocket motors, which actually broke off. And then you had the main booster basically to get you into orbit. Now I'm taking a look over here and I'm seeing my delta V number is looking a little on the tiny side here. I'm going to have to get myself a lot more delta V in order to be able to get safely into orbit. I'm not doing the math quickly, but if my you know, 50, I think about 5,200. So we're going to need a lot more fuel in order to get up to that altitude. So maybe I'll bring this thing down to a 12 meter rocket here. Go ahead and slap that on the bottom. Yeah, we're getting there. Remember, it's the mass of your weight here. So I'm going to bring this down. We'll bring this down to 14 meters. That's a really tall little rocket. 47.16, we're starting to get close. We'll go up to a 15 meter rocket. Should get us up to that magical 15,000 point. Let's try it now. I'm right, sorry, 5,000 point. Boop. Mm, close enough, close enough. I know you're sitting there going, you can't be close enough, this is rocket science. Yeah, but what I'm actually going to do is, um, in case you didn't notice, this fuel tank weighs 36,000 kilograms, but it carries 34,000 pounds, kilograms of fuel. Now, I don't know if you know, but fuel tanks are not that heavy. I, I don't know if that's a known thing or it's just an issue, but what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna literally drop the mass of this thing by 5%. We'll just say we use some nicer materials. Okay, now we have to solve the next problem. In the original Jupiter mission, they had to use these little side motors in order to get the main engine up. Again, I haven't actually built my main motor yet. I'm still kind of getting started here. Um, are these rocket engines or motors? No, they have to be engines because they're always called motors, but they're engines because they're external gas. So let's go ahead and make ourselves a teeny, teeny little side stage that we're going to use for the purpose of just getting this thing space a little bit sooner. So I'm going to get myself a couple little stages here. I'm going to put them at the, uh, actually, I'm going to put them on the sides here. We're going to go switch over to mirror mode real quick. Did I miss? I missed. I always do that. Let's put it right there, I think. Uh, actually, I actually went 270. Perfect. Okay, let's go ahead and mirror that across so it's on the other side. You can also use radial mode. And let's attach my little booster engines on here. So basically, to build my booster engine, I'm going to take a little tiny fuel tank. And when I say tiny, I mean like tiny fuel tank. I don't want anything too big here. Control Z. I don't need anything that complicated. Because remember, this thing is just going to be holding the fuel here. All right. I'll do something like this. That looks good. Uh, of course, I have to re-synchronize it with this. Hey, there you go. And of course, uh, if we want to be a little bit more authentic here, we could actually come in here with the adjustment mode. And I could grab the top of this, and I could actually do this to the rocket, which I think is uh, one of those things that I don't play with nearly enough, but you know, I'm going to play with a little bit here, just because we can, right? There we go. Hey, look at that ugly thing. Ooh, man, I might make some ugly rockets sometimes. Okay, that looks pretty good to me. I'm going to go ahead and raise this up a little bit now. Again, these are going to be my booster rockets. These are not going to be my main carriers here. And yeah, 270 looks pretty darn good. I actually got to adjust it just a little bit here. And yeah, 270 on the nose. Beautiful. <laughs> That's terrible. Okay, next thing I want to do is I'm going to set these guys to have a priority one. Uh, the reason I need priority one here is that the fuel gets sucked out of these first. Next thing I need to do is I'm going to have to come in here. I'm going to have to actually turn on fuel transfer mode. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get myself this handy dandy rocket motor that I built. And I'm just going to go ahead and whoop, <laughs> check that out. And now I've got myself a handy dandy little lower stage. Let's go ahead and uh, get myself another one of those. I think that was a mage. Whoop, All right, what do we got? Delightful. Okay, now it's time to actually just design this thing. Now, the cool thing is because we're clever rocket designers, we're going to design this so that our rocket motor that's on the bottom is optimized for space. And these two rocket motors are going to be optimized for traveling through the atmosphere. Kind of that let's get going kind of rocket. But notice my thrust to weight ratio is now perfect. I love that. Oh, we're burning kerosene over on that side. No, 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 no. We're burning aerosene. There we go. You got to make sure the fuels are compatible with each other. Otherwise, you're going to get yourself in a lot of trouble. Okay, looking good. 
So we are a gas generator. We're going to use gas generator for both. We have Merlin and we have Bell for this particular unit. Again, we want to optimize this one for being able to travel through the atmosphere. So let's see here. To do that, we're going to have to play with the Bell size. Uh, let's see if we can get a really nice old school style. I like the Merlin. I think it's cool. Uh, redstone. Redstone would actually be very appropriate, but I need something with a little bit better gas mileage. Uh, what do we have there? I don't want an arrow spike. Arrow spike's actually too new. We'll use cone. We'll get a little old fashioned. Let's go ahead and tweak this. Again, we're trying to find that sweet spot where we're just the right amount of thrust. That looks good. We'll adjust our nozzle length again to get ourselves slightly better gas mileage here. All right, looks good. Okay, awesome. So these are going to be our two booster motors. And we're automatically going to eject those when we don't need them anymore. You're probably saying, um, when are you going to eject those? Well, we're going to eject those the moment that a thrust to weight ratio gets strong enough that the main engine can kind of take over. Speaking of the main engine, I expect that altitude to be at about 20, 25 kilometers. So I'm actually going to optimize this engine for that altitude. All right, let's go ahead and fit with it just a little bit here. Uh, nozzle throat size. Again, this is going to give me my big impact on fuel economy. We're going to make it kind of small. I'm actually going to set it to about 50%, which is definitely going to impact that thing a lot. Um, I'm not going to adjust size here. You could make the original rocket a little bit bigger. Last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to disable gimbling on these two outside motors. I don't need them to gimbal because I have the inner motor to kind of do the hard work for me here. Okay, <laughs> this is starting to come together. As a matter of fact, I've actually improved my... Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Hate it when that happens. Ah, we gotta go check our staging. So this is actually looking really good. I'm actually, I'm not gonna lie, I'm kind of impressed with this. All right, now yeah, we're in business. Okay, let's just study to make sure. All engines fire. These two engines fall off. This engine, uh, which should be this one, where's my interstage? stage? That one separates, and then we have our kind of our cruising around engine. We have our interstage, stage, and then we have our re-entry stage. Delightful, we're, in, we're looking pretty darn good so far. So uh, yeah, 5721 is gonna be more than enough to get us airborne here. Spaceborne, I should say, I should be more specific. I'm also studying my engines are three. My thrust to weight is actually very high, which is not unusual if you're an ICBM. I tried to do this with a Minuteman missile once and uh, that was pretty entertaining as well, as you can imagine. Okay, let's go ahead and get some RCS system now that we've got everything looking pretty good. Put one of the RCS control nozzles right there. I'm gonna go ahead and set it to be radial. Go ahead and give me four of those. I'm gonna go all the way up to the top. Remember, don't put your RCS on your nozzle. You don't need it there. I should say your CEM if you wanna call it something slightly different. I'm gonna go ahead and give myself some of those. Remember, this is a gimbling engine, so it will have the capability to kind of roll itself around as it needs to. And there we have my incredibly knocked off version of, I guess I'm gonna call it Jupiter here, my, my Mercury Jupiter. Now I haven't actually test flown this, so I have no idea what's gonna happen when we actually take it for a spin. So uh, fingers crossed that I don't die or crash this thing horribly. Uh, one thing that is missing is um, this is not nearly shiny enough. Duh, I think I made it invisible. Sorry about that. Oh, I, that, oh oops, nope. Uh, I am just sucking to this today. Oh, that's, that, that's kind of nice. I'm going to work with that. I like that. Bam. Ta-da. <laughs> okay. Well, let's see what happens. Okay. This game, I just, you could just play with this game for like weeks. I just enjoyed it so much. All right. So we're going to throttle it up all the way and go. Whee! Oh my, that's a lot of thrust. Now notice because um, we have two different types of engines here, they're burning differently. But notice these engines are having no difficulty running. The ah, no. I should have set that to priority one. Mm. Want, want, mission failed. So little old me got my uh, priorities backwards. These should have been priority zero. This should have been priority one. Want, want. All right, fire that set of engineers. You guys did a garbage. Oh, wait, that was me. Go. All right, this time, definitely. Yeah, it worked fine. Cool. Okay, so uh, this is an insanely high thrust to weight ratio. I would imagine the real one, if I recall correctly. Hey, these, these burnt out again. So we don't need them, right? Yeah, we needed them. So um, we're about to die horrible death. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'll break everything off and activate my parachute and I'm gonna be saved now. Oh God. <laughs> All right, so we're having an issue with our fuel here. So we need to find out why those are burning out and not sucking fuel out of the main system there successfully. So, okay, let the debugging begin, so to speak. So the weird thing is usually it would set this to priority one because uh, it gets uh, fuel tanks with a higher priority will be drained first. This one is definitely the one with a higher priority. Hmm. Let's go to analyze mode. Let's go study those inner stages down there. That's my side inner stage. Let's just confirm that it is doing fuel transfer. Indeed it is. Interesting, interesting. 
All right, let me just confirm that while we're doing okay here. Because again, for some reason, they might be burning different fuel. So I'm actually going to grab this one and say that this is going to be the one that receives fuel. I'm going to say this one receives fuel, and I'm going to say that this one gives fuel. So let's see what happens when we actually activate everything here. Because I'm very curious to see how this behaves. You know, this is still going to burn me out all the way. And these are kind of neat little boosters, though. I kind of like that part. And those completely drain out, and everything's running fine. Figures. All right, sometimes that happens, I guess. Okay, so let's go ahead and start climbing. Interesting. Yeah, you can actually see very closely that there's a teeny tiny little squirt fuel that's coming into these every once in a while. Probably something to do with my prioritization. I didn't quite get it as accurately as I needed to. Also, these engines probably suck down fuel a lot more aggressively than our big ones. Let's actually confirm that real quick. Kilograms a second. What do we got in this guy? Oh, yeah, that's why. Yeah, these things suck down fuel a lot more aggressively. But anyway, we have a flight to complete here, so it's time to go ahead and start our gravity turn. Interesting that our thrust to weight ratio is indicated as 0.64, even though we're not getting 0.64, we're getting quite a bit more. All right, start a nice little gravity turn. Of course, the astronaut, remember, he's just a test dummy. I don't have to worry about him too much. More than half weight. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that extra mass. I don't need it anymore. Ah, that was the wrong time to get rid of that extra mass. I see that my thrust to weight ratio is pretty low, and I'm not going to make apoapsis. Ah! Who knew this rocket science would be that difficult to do? I'm still a little confused as to why those are not moving correctly because it's identical fuel groups, different amounts of fuel. It must have something to do with the fact that they just suck the fuel down a lot faster. So that's actually, <laughs> it was toxic now. So this comes with 50% hydrazine. Yeah, that doesn't help at all with this kind of an issue. So um, I'm just debating, I, I should really sit down and do the math, but um, I, I'm having too much fun. So I'm just gonna back to the test pad here. Give it full power here. I'm going to go ahead and set this to be fill my tanks, please. Set this one to be fill my tanks, please. And set this one to go ahead and do that. Ready to go. Whee! All right. I wonder if while wow, we're running, like these are running a little dry or something like that. So let's see here. What are we getting right now? We're still getting uh, six, 369 here. I excuse you. Looks pretty good. Looks pretty good. Okay. ISP is good. All that's pretty stable. That's good. All right, we've gotten about two kilometers up. We're going to start our little pitching turn here. I feel sorry for that two groups of astronauts. I should say test dummies. You know, it was probably like a good half a billion dollars I just wasted uh, trying to solve these things the old-fashioned way. All right, that's looking pretty good, actually. That's looking pretty good. So what did we learn last time? Um, don't drop those extra motors off until you get quite a bit higher. Got it. This is our gravity turn here. We want to continue climbing. Again, we're going to be doing a bit of a millennia orbit here, so I'll probably have to reignite the engines. In the really, really early days, you actually could not reignite a rocket engine. I mean, it could be done, but it was uh, it was a bit of a process. It wasn't something you could do easily or quickly. We seem to be burning okay so far. I like how I thrust to weight ratio. Yeah, see how it keeps flickering like that? Yeah, those engines are sucking fuel a lot faster than those uh, fuel pumps are working properly to keep it maintained okay. I'm going to get a little bit less fuel. Let's get it down to about a third, and then we'll go ahead and dump those motors off and see if it helps us out here. All right, our apoapsis is plenty high enough. We're going to go ahead and level off and start picking up some orbital speed here. Actually, one of the safest ways to do this, and one of the methods they actually would use is they point back towards the planet. I know that seems very unintuitive, but it actually works pretty well. Hey, now we're good. All right. Now we're sort of accelerating. Again, we're trying to build up our orbital velocity here as fast as we can. We do have that little retro rocket, but we're kind of saving that for a little later on. This seems a little unintuitive, but my apoapsis is not being raised right now that much. As a matter of fact, I'm going to pitch down to about 11 degrees. Basically, all we're doing now is picking up as much orbital velocity as we possibly can. And I'll be a plenty of time to do so, so I'm not worried about it too, too much. As a matter of fact, if you take a look at my kind of orbital view here, you can see my apoapsis is about 125 kilometers, and my actual kind of uh, landing point there is starting to pick up nicely. Now, I really got a question uh, dropping off the two motors we didn't need. I feel like we could have done this entire operation with a single motor the whole time. But at the very least, at least we know this motor uh, produces a pretty hefty amount of thrust, so I'm not too worried about it. Yep, I'm seeing my apoapsis is staying more or less constant, which is awesome. Pitch down, eh, 11 degrees seems to be the sweet spot here. Again, I'm just trying to pick up as much surface velocity as I possibly can. Let's go ahead and take a peek at everything from this perspective real quickly. You can see I'm about 2.1 miles away. My inclination, my eccentricity is at 0.45, so I'm almost to orbit here. It's off a little bit of time acceleration. Now, the interesting thing is you start closing in in the orbit, you're going to watch your apoapsis start going whoosh and start zipping by you as fast as it possibly can. As you can see right now, it's starting to accelerate very quickly. Now, what I'm actually going to do is I'm right about to hit orbit. Remember going millennia today, though, so we're going to try to get a nice and steep orbit and basically burn up the last bit. All right. 
Okay, let's kind of take a look. Here comes the orbit. And off we go, about 8% fuel. So my calculations that I never actually made were actually pretty accurate today. I'm gonna continue that burn, but this time I'm gonna switch right to a prograde burn. Again, all we're trying to do at this particular point is build up a little bit more speed so we can get ourselves a really, 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 really eccentric orbit. <laughs> it's a very, like I said, it's a very, oh my God, this is gonna be an eccentric orbit. Uh, that's probably too eccentric. Come down. Otherwise, we're gonna end up accidentally going to geo-orbit or something like that. And that's it. Woohoo! <laughs> well, thank you, Mr. Jupiter missile. You were extremely helpful. So I have an apoapsis of 3029 kilometers. <laughs> Look at this. I can basically get to the moon. All right, let's go ahead and start plotting our evil mission here. So I'm actually gonna go here and I'm gonna order up um oh, I only needed 70 meters a second to re-enter. Lame. Oh, I guess I didn't need a 450. I could have made the thing a lot smaller. Let's aim to skip off the atmosphere at 25 kilometers. That's perfect. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fast forward. And now I'm at my burn point. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and point ourselves retrograde. We are a long way up now. And then we're going to go ahead and activate our handy dandy little get me down motor. Now remember our get me down motor here, um, we over-engineered it uh, a lot. So unfortunately, not only is it gonna get me down, but it's probably gonna knock me flat out of orbit and I'm gonna go smacking into the planet at an extremely high angle, which is cool because we actually have the capability to uh, reduce some of this. So I'm not too, too worried. When la, oh no, get you back where you're supposed to be. I told you we brought too much fuel and we gotta do the math next time. All right, do my little spin and separate. Nice. Let's go ahead and point my little spacecraft towards retrograde here. It looks like uh, we've gotten caught on something here. Ah, apparently this guy never actually was on side. He's been riding this rocket this entire time. Ooh, he's not gonna appreciate that re-entry at all. All right, let's go ahead and speed up time and uh, see what happens when we get a little bit closer. Oh, nope, 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 licensed. Hey, you can see all the bits of the rocket that it launched. They're not having any issues with this. Uh-oh. So remember that little twist we did at the very, very end there that we were trying to use in order to get rid of the rocket? Yeah, look what happened. We are trapped in orbit. <laughs> okay, so I'm probably gonna end the video right here. Um, clearly uh, my capsule design is uh, very inferior. Uh, if I had done my math a little bit more aggressively, again, that's some, the fun with this is we can accidentally and still have a really fun time with it. So um, yeah, that, that, that didn't go so well for us. So, oh well. So he's stuck in orbit, but um, we can get him down the easy way. Bye-bye. <laughs> All right, hopefully this video was interesting. Again, uh, I'll have to probably spend another two and a half hours of perfecting that thing, and then I'll make a Vizzy program for it. Uh, if you folks enjoy stuff like this, I can kind of keep going with it, you know, kind of do some Gemini things, or even, you know, do like an all solid rocket or a jet engine version of this. We'll have to play with that next time. Other than that, enjoy.